Hey folks, welcome to the Business of Story, a special session today where I'm not only going to play your host, but I'm going to be like back screen program manager, bringing people on and off. And, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun because what we're going to do today is work and coach and show you how the and, but, and therefore works uh, to help you really super focus your brand storytelling clarify it and we have a special guest here and then we've got some three friends that have showed up brave souls that we are going to work through their abts a special session it's all about how to focus your story to captivate your audience and it's about the abt marketing method and of course i would be remiss if i didn't share with you my brand new book that just came out ups delivered a bunch of boxes yesterday more today brand bewitchery everything I've ever learned about how to craft and tell compelling brand stories that sell, and you can buy yours right now, bit.ly.com or bit.ly forward slash brand bewitchery. So today, my friend Randy Olson, he was Harvard PhD evolutionary biologist. He had it made, he had tenure, but what he was really interested in was communication, communication dynamic and how we all react to this. And so he gave up tenure, went to USC film school, graduated, produced three documentaries on uh, climate change, global warming. One of his in particular, Flock of Dodos, absolutely took off, was on Showtime for a couple of years um, and, and many other, I think he was even in the Tribeca Film Festival. But to me, that's all important, but his work that he's done in helping communicators, scientists become better communicators through storytelling, and not one, but four different books is uh, what makes it really interesting to me. He is the applied science of storytelling. I have used so much of what I've learned from Randy to create the bewitchery side of how do you use these dynamics as being an intentional storyteller to hook the hearts of your audiences and you know get them to move you know move to action i will also say randy is my i think longest running guest on business of story i've had him on four different times our most recent show a few months back came on the launch of his fourth book when we talked about the abt and the use of it in branding and business building and it's such a wonderful little but powerful narrative structure you can even see it here in my uh, my instagram post most executives communicate and care, but bore. Therefore, use the universal narrative structure of the ABT to excel through the stories you tell. And I am so excited to bring Randy on right now. Let me jump over here. And Randy, I know you're here somewhere. Let me find you. Ah, there we go. Three, two, one. Randy Olson, gentlemen. Hey. Gentlemen. <laughs> and we're live. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. How about you? Dude, it's great to have you here again. We've been having a lot of fun. Um, you've been running story circles online for scientists around the world, actually, mostly in North America over the last couple of COVID months. And you've been kind enough to invite me on to work with some of them. And I've had a blast. So I wanted to repay it and thank you and, and bring you on to talk to our folks. Cool. Let's do it. Okie doke. The ABT narrative template, which is what we're going to talk about. And Unfortunately, I couldn't get Safari to work right with this thing, so I'll just be queuing Park for advance, advance. I'll just say next, next. Um, okay, so story is traditionally holistic. You know, we've got thousands of years of the telling of story. The written record begins 4,000 years ago with Gilgamesh, but really for eons, people have been telling stories. And in general, none of those people over the ages have known the structure of how a story went together. They haven't had a set of rules that they're, a book that they're using. They just tell it from holistic intuition, gut instinct. You hear this term natural born storyteller. Some people are better than others. I think in the old days in the, the tribes of cave people, there was somebody who was the designated storyteller. And I got a feeling that person's brain was configured towards this better. The ABT that we're going to talk about here is analytical. So there's your big divide, which is that this age old tradition of being holistic we're coming at it with a little bit more analytical and a little bit more on, focus on the science side of things. Here we have two representative humans. Let's start here with the visceral level, which is again, at the gut level, this is how storytelling has, has taken place over the ages and throughout the humanities. There's a tendency to be more fond of the visceral 
and the art and the mystique and the mysteriousness and everything like that. And in the advertising world, you know, they bring in the intuitives. They're the people that are driven by the gut. They can't even explain exactly where'd you get this idea from? I don't know. We're just going to go with it as opposed to up there with the cerebral and what the cerebral element gives you is a little bit more ability to actually analyze things and explain how they work a little bit and justify the advice that you're giving. So back on the visceral side, it's about the intuitive side. It's the whole put together. It's the more human elements. It tends to be more vague and it's more drawing on the art. And that's great. It's essential. You can't do good communications without this big art component. But at the cerebral end, you have this analytical, more specific, more precise, more repeatable and drawing on the elements of science. So this is the structure that underpins these stories or narratives or whatever. And that's where the ABT resides. That's the power and importance of this ABT tool. That's why it's taken off to begin with so widely within the science world, because the science people need a little more analytical thing to lock onto. Now, what we're talking about here and what I'm talking about, and I meant to ask you earlier about this, um, Parker, is your term a purpose-driven brand. But I assume that's basically the idea that we're you're not just communicating for artistic expression. You've got an actual purpose you're trying to accomplish a goal and get information across towards that end so what that means then is we have the two fundamental ways to communicate the first of which is the non-narrative template that is the structure of basically putting together strings of information you know we've got a product and it does this and it does this and it does this and it does this that's all nice that's information it's important but that's not narrative. We've yet to build this around. Well, what exactly is the problem that we're addressing with this product as opposed to what we call narrative structure, which is what the ABT template gives you and the ABT, it uses and to get the process going. So it's a story of this and this, then it hits this word of contradiction, but, and that's when the narrative part begins. We pose a problem there, but we've got a problem in the world, this and this, and nobody else's product um, managed to address it. Therefore, we've come up with this new product that does address that problem. So it's basically set up problem solution, two modes of communication, the non-narrative and, and, and versus the narrative ABT. Now, the world of neurophysiology is beginning to make some minor inroads into this stuff. Don't be deluded by the journalists that like to tell big stories from the neuroscience world about how we're wired for this, that, and the other thing. It's actually still pretty primal as much as they're able to, to accomplish. One of the problems is this work costs a fortune to do um, functional MRI work, which is one of the central tools they use, costs 10,000 bucks per session. Here's some of the, the beginning work that they've seen, which is they put people in the MRI machine, they have them watch video that does and does not tell a story. And what you see on the left side there, the non-narrative, and what they use for that is just video of people walking randomly around a park. There's no story going on. And you see very little activity of the brain then when you have the same people watch a movie that's like a murder mystery and somebody pulls out a gun, of course, you see the brain fire up. That's the butt. That's the problem. We've got a gun being pointed somewhere and the brain gets very active and people's brain patterns of activity are very similar from one individual to the next. Whereas back in the non-narrative there, you see very little is activated and there's a lot of variation from one person to the next. So your goal in all communication, ideal, if you're wanting to do this sort of working towards a goal with your communication is to draw on the right side there, the narrative to activate the brain through the power of narrative and get everybody engaged and understanding. So this ABT is the simplest of all templates. And then you begin to look around throughout our world and you begin to realize it's everywhere. Everywhere there's effective communication, you will see the ABT dynamic at work. These three fundamental forces, not just and, but, and therefore, but what the three words embody are the forces of agreement, contradiction, and consequence. So my good friend, Park Howell, about six years ago, out of the blue, when he first heard about the ABT, sent me an email and said, hey, did you ever look at the Gettysburg Address? It turns out it's nothing more than an ABT. You look at the first paragraph, and that's the setup where he's saying we've got this wonderful country. The next paragraph is where he states the problem. But we're now engaged in a great civil war. The word but's not in there, but you can feel it. You can feel the power of contradiction. And then the third paragraph is the statement of what we need to do as a result of it. And you see I've dropped the word therefore in the middle there. It's not in the text, but... Therefore, it's up to us, the living, rather, to be dedicated. This, this is what we need to do. So it's uh, set up problem and not so much solution, but actions as a consequence of it. To just underscore how ubiquitous this structure is, nurse, almost all nursery rhymes are ABT. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating her curds and whey. But long came a spider who sat down beside her. 
and therefore frightened Miss Muffet away. Uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill uh, and they were seeking to fetch a pail of water, but Jack fell down, broke his crown. Therefore, Jill came tumbling after. You see it everywhere. You can see it on the front page every single day of the New York Times. When you look at their stories on the front page, they have been incubated through this cheese grater of narrative where they have found the narrative structure. And over and over again, you'll see the structure of one or two or three paragraphs of and, and, and stuff to set it up. And then look right there in that example on the right. There's a paragraph that starts with the word, but I am such a narrative nerd. I count it on a daily basis. And you find that there's an average of about two stories a day on the front page of the New York Times that have got a paragraph that starts with the word, but that is the beginning of the contradiction. That's how ubiquitous this structure is. A couple more examples of how ubiquitous it is. If you've ever, I mean, you're all familiar with the Carly Rae Jepsen song, uh, Call Me Maybe. Hey, I just met you and this is crazy, but here's my number. Therefore, so call me maybe. So is the more common uh, use or form of, of therefore. Same basic forces at work in, in hugely popular songs. You see it everywhere. One more example here from your world of marketing. Here is a Coca-Cola ad and take a look at the structure here. The first thing they say, it begins with the agreement. This is what we can all agree on. They don't make them like they used to. Yep, we can agree on that, but we do therefore drink Coca-Cola. This is now a course that I've put together that gives you the basics of the narrative structure. And then it's 50-50. The course itself is the first half of the hour is background lecture like that material. Then the second half of the hour is everybody in the course gets their five minutes of working on their own ABT, which we're about to do in a few minutes. And the more that we've done this, we just started this in April, and I've done this for five years in our story circles training, but I've never quite put them back to back like this with individuals. So in general, we have about four or five of these um, ABT, we call it the ABT build sessions. And what we do is we'll have you read your ABT up there and then we'll set to work, not completely fixing it, just giving you a few of the key structural points to think about in terms of working on the narrative. And it really turns into kind of puzzle solving. So that's where we are. Thanks for that, Randy. That was like a sprint on the background of the ABT. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. We've got questions coming in, but I want to bring in our special guests now, and we are going to work through these, right? So we've got our first up, we've got three folks, and we're going to bring in, let me, um, Ross, and welcome, by the way. Great to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. And Randy, cool. I thought the Call Me Maybe was very compelling. I did not feel <laughs> Was that the clincher for you? That's, that's just, that's gold. Call Me Maybe, what, it's got over a billion views on YouTube. Is that because they use the ABT in the chorus? Probably so, right? Yeah, I think so. People are dying because they are afraid to go to the hospital, and humanity rests on our ability to keep our society safe. But it doesn't have to be this way. Therefore, by running the technology framework of Uber and expert nurses around the country, Navi has created an Uber for nurses that can help triage and treat patients over video chat and in-person visits at scale that can help save the world. What we do is color code the three parts for the three forces. So agreement there at the beginning, that's your setup. The red is the contradiction, the statement, the problem, and then the green is the consequence, um, the therefore. Okay, so here's my thought on this one which is you've got um, you know very dramatic problem going on. But in general, what you want with this ABT dynamic, and this is what we get into in great depth, and I, I'm guessing that a lot of you have heard the basics of the hero's journey. And that's sort of, this is kind of like a micro condensed version of the hero's journey, what the ABT is. What you're wanting to do is to achieve basically what happens with that hero's journey model is you've got this stable, calm, ordinary world that Joseph Campbell once described and then you have the inciting incident, the moment that turns everything and suddenly rockets you into the special world. And now you've got a problem that's been established. And so that's the inciting incident. So that's the dynamic you're wanting to get all the way down here at this micro scale is you're wanting to begin in the, the thing that we can all agree on, this agreement stuff, um, the kind of the calm world before you start the action, because it's on the action, you've got your best chance of breaking through to people activating their brains like you saw in those brain scans and getting everybody to, to zoom in and focus on what we're talking about here and getting concerned about the issue. So what you've got here with this ABT 
is you've gone ahead and started it with the the drama where you've got people are dying because they're afraid to go to the hospital. So you've already told us the problem at the outset. Probably work a little bit better if you can start us in the ordinary world, um, even mm. though pandemic is not exactly an ordinary world. But basically, we're at a point now where the pandemic's hit and we're kind of managing it. You know, there seems to be some sort of a vibe that certainly not where it was three months ago, where everybody was totally in uncertainty. So we've got this world that's kind of stabilized out. Now you're going to throw in something that's going to overturn that. But people are dying in big numbers because they're afraid to go to the hospital, which, by the way, just this morning, I was surfing with a buddy of mine who's an ER technician was telling me exactly this. It's horrifying. All the people that are staying home with heart attacks and strokes, exactly what you're talking about it really brings it home. So there's your dramatic crisis. And the goal here is to try and go for that one dramatic moment to the best of your ability, even if what you're talking about is not a particularly dramatic topic. You've got it right there. And so now you pull us in like, oh, my God, we've got a problem here. People are dying. Now we really want to know what the solution is. And there you go with the you're there for which you've got a whole bunch of things that are addressing it. Exactly. Does that make some sense? It makes complete sense. This is actually, you know, in Iron Man one, the reason I did it this way, you know, in the first scene of Iron Man, he's running through the convoy and they, uh -huh. they shoot, they shoot at him at yeah, the yeah. beginning. But I think the park always says kind of the fractal of it. The, the micro story is when you look at the convoy, it's an ordinary world. They're just talking, having a fine time. And yeah. then it hits you with it. So I think I love your point about it's not, I was trying to go, okay, we'll go conflict, but you have to, I think to your, or not think, to your point, start us in the convoy even in that micro example, then the bombs hit and that's what gets you hooked. So I love that. I'm going to take, I got notes here and yeah. I appreciate your time. Well, yeah. one of the cool things with this whole course is we're still making it up as we go along, you know, with every new ABT, it's, it's really fun. It's all puzzle solving. And you guys toss these things up on the screen and then we're staring at it, trying to figure out what's going on exactly here. And we're learning things. And Park and I, for the last six or seven years, he's been such a huge help in developing this base of knowledge. He, he's pointed out a bunch of these key elements. But one of the things that's, I think, come clear in the last month of doing so many of these ABTs is the more, the stronger you can make that contrast from the ordinary world to the wildly, exactly what you're saying in Iron Man. And what you get a lot of times, we've been seeing some of the more recent ABTs people have been putting together, they've got that bomb explosion, but it's further down in the red part. It's like, oh, you know, suddenly he hears the whistling or something like that. And they're talking to each other. I don't know. It, it just, you, you kind of want it right up against there. Yeah, exactly. And so that becomes part of the, the tweaking of it. Um, cool. Okay. All right. Hey man. Thanks, Thanks. Ross. I appreciate Thank it. You. Let's bring in our next subject, suspect, victim, <laughs> Greg Head from Scaling Point and Greg's List. Good pal of mine now living out in Dallas. I miss you. I miss our gin and tonics up at the Henry. I went in there. Well, it was like winter time, and we were having a drink up there a year and a half or so ago. And I walk, and he orders a beer for whatever reason. I just felt like a gin and tonic. And he goes, "What are we at the lake?" <laughs> I just thought that was a really funny line. Greg, Randy. Now, Greg, you've been a follower of Randy's for a while through the podcast, and you've been using the ABT quite a lot in your work. Yeah, I do a lot of positioning work for early stage uh, tech companies, uh, growth companies, uh, I'll figure out what they are. And uh, on top of that, I've used the narrative story model parks tools and the ABT, which is the simplest form uh, to bring out a, a story that can get attention and make things change. Right. You can position somebody, but that's not a story that people want to hear in the world. So this is you know, this is the fastest way to do it. And I use it myself. I used it uh, with gregslist.com uh, because, uh, well, we'll go into that, I, you know. So software companies in Phoenix need to hire top ta talent to help them grow. And tech companies have always struggled to recruit fast. But when the COVID-19 crisis struck, many Phoenix software companies had to lay off many of their uh, employees, a bunch of their staff, including top talent with more than 10 years of industry experience. Therefore, we created a list of displaced uh, software industry talent on Greg's list with over 100 displaced software leaders now to help them find jobs fast. Okay, good. Uh, and that's exactly what you want now once you've set up this whole thing. And by the way, you know, one of the simple rules that, that Park and I have kind of discerned on this thing, the quicker you can get through the A and the B, the more we want, we'll let you go on and on with the green stuff. That's what yeah. we're here. We're here to hear the therefore, what are you doing exactly? 
And if you do a good job with the A and the B, with the blue and the red, if you pull us in quickly and, and pose a really interesting problem, then we'll give you all day on the green stuff. But the problem is if you drag things out too much in the, the setup and your question isn't that good, then we just really want you to keep the therefore to a minimum because we're not that engaged. So that's the real toughest right. challenge is minimizing the A and the B. So here's the first thought that I've got. And this comes from my film experience background, all those sorts of things. One of the standard questions gets asked in screenwriting is whose story is it? So, you know, you write a screenplay about four people on a road trip and they're all four interesting characters. And that's nice. But, you know, are you just looking to reach the little artsy audience or are you really looking to reach the big mass audience? If you want the mass audience, then there's the power of the singular narrative and you have to make these tough choices. And, well, I want to reach all four you know, audiences of the four people now. Really, in the end, it's really a central rule for reaching the big audience. Whose story is it? So you've got here two different stories, basically. Oh. You have the story of the companies um, who face this problem of, of finding talent and things like that. Then you see you end it on the story of the 20 people who got jobs. I know your, your inclination is I want it to be the story of both of them. Well, you can do that. But really, if you want to maximize the power, it becomes a question of your audience to some extent. But telling the singular story and coming full circle so that you set it up with there's all these people who have lost their jobs, but we've created this resource. And therefore, now at least 20 of them have solved their problem or there are these companies had this problem, yada, yada. And we've created this resource and now they're solving that problem. Yeah, Those, I, see, I was mixing the, the lines there. I appreciate that. Okay, doke. Yeah. So that's that becomes the tough thing is, you know, sorting things out, trying to get to that singular narrative. There's a best-selling book written in 2011 or 12, I think called The One Thing. And if you ask me, I don't think that there's much value to the content inside that book, but the title itself is extremely powerful and important, which is what's the one thing that is at the core of this? And that just becomes tough. And I deal with all these sub uh, scientists who constantly want to have 18 things in their narrative. And that's nice, but you know, um, there, there's a price to be paid. Is there one more note on that? Or that was it? That was it, my friend. Oh, uh, could, you think, get... uh, it doesn't get to the, 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 butt conflict fast enough or, um, can we, can we get it back up park? I can't you betcha. Can we have a couple more minutes on this one? Well, sure. You, you told me to keep pushing you forward, I, man. So okay. that's what I'm, I'm paying attention here. Limiting us to five minutes. Um, <laughs> so let's see. No, I, I thought a lot about that. Your butt and, and actually the, the COVID crisis is a pretty powerful thing. All right. On to the third one. Thank you. Hey, Greg. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Now, next up, Celeste. We got a chance to meet, um, and let me get your microphone on. There you go. Uh, we got to work together over the last uh, month or so. Did a special training with the local ANA uh, organization here in town. Celeste and her team over at Jaeger Marketing pulled all that together. And so thanks for joining us here. Yeah, definitely. Um, this one that you're going to be seeing, and by the way, the, the one thing, the thing I think about every single time is the movie City Slickers which I'm dating oh. myself, and it's curly with you. <laughs> keep saying the one thing. <laughs> have, you, have you seen that book, The One Thing? I have not, no. Well, that that's how they open it, the very first chapter. Oh, how funny. About that, that scene, exactly. So that's where it all no, or it originates from. And it's absolutely true, you know, the singular narrative in a world of too much information. And it's so hard, and as I was saying, these poor scientists, they just can't accept the one thing. No, we've got to have everything in there. I know, but then everybody gets nothing. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, okay, great. Let's dive into this one. Oil and gas is a complex industry with so many factors that affect the financials. And when there is volatility in the market, it's important to be able to know how to take action based on the financial impact. But few companies truly know the impact of their actions because they're spending half the month doing reporting on outdated ERP systems. Therefore, W5 Consulting can cut that reaction time to hours by moving your S4 HANA uh, ERP system to the cloud. Okay, this is a little awkward to say, but I don't have a ton of <laughs> critical things to say on this one. It's in pretty good shape. I think you could probably shrink down the, the blue part and the red part a little bit. I think that um, you might get a little bit more punch out of the butt statement by moving the, the problem right up there to immediately. Uh, but most companies use outdated systems, whereas you've, you've kind of gotten into the second half of the thing you're telling us that. It, it's pretty clear the setup. 
So here's one of the dynamics that, that actually Park really pointed this out probably five years ago now, which is all else equal in this basic template of the and button, therefore, you want two things in the blue part. You want the ordinary world, which is just get us into what are we talking about here, oil and gas um, industry, yada, yada, yada. So you want to get us oriented. And then secondly, what's at stake? Why is this important? Why does it matter? That You usually want that right before the butt. And if you do a good job right there of explaining to everybody, you know, this is a super duper important resource, but guess what? It's about to be blown up. It's really crucial. That is what gives the impact of this thing is how well you set up why this thing really matters, why it's important. And you've done that to a large extent here. You got us the ordinary world at the beginning, complex industry, so many factors affect the financials. And when there's volatility in the market, it's important. Here's what I would push you on this one. One of the fundamental rules of storytelling is that the power of storytelling rests in the specifics. And in the, even in these ABTs, the, the idea of the ABT is this is meant to be your single kind of central core blueprint for the narrative that you're working on. And it's the kind of thing you can share with everybody in your group and it keeps everybody on track. What exactly we're working on? Well, look, it's right here in the, the master ABT. And so you want to try and get these things in there and yet you don't want too much that you bog it down. It's, it needs to still have a flow like this one does. But, and yet this word, it's important. I wonder if I could push you further on that. Is there any number that you could maybe dig into and find that would give us, you know, it's, it's value is, is X billion of dollars, who knows what, that's one place where you add the importance by getting a little more specific, possibly, if you've got that ability to, to elaborate on that. And then you get right into the problem, which is, I mean, the problem is very simple. They're using outdated systems. And that's that's easily relatable. Everybody can connect with that. Like, oh, my God, that's crisis. Once again, if you got a number that, that kind of brings that to life, you know, the, the systems are so outdated that 80 percent of these companies now are doing this and that. It's, it's, again, the one number. You don't want to pack this thing full of eight numbers. But if you've got the one that instantly kind of grabs us. And then I put the dot, dot, dot there because it's exactly what I said. You've done a nice job of hooking us. And now if we really were here, we'd be ready to hear the whole long list of all the green stuff that you've, you've kind of motivated us to listen to. Uh, Park, you got any thoughts on that one? No, I think it's great. And I really like the point about the but. I would just simplify that. And the funny thing is I fall into the same trap too. Of you, you kind of seem like you want to pat it because you think it adds more to the story. But in this case, I think you just go, but they're operating on outdated ERP systems. Boom. And it, it, it builds that contradiction very quickly. So your audience goes, oh, God, you're right. So what do we do about it? Boom. And then you get into your therefore. Al Franken has a podcast now. And back in January, he had Lawrence O'Donnell on there. And he, he said one little bit that really is, is stuck with me, resonated me. Um, he talked about the importance of communication for members of the Senate. And he said, the problem in the Senate is none of my colleagues understood the importance of a moment. And he said, with my background in television, movies, things like that, he said, I know that. And the only way you get media coverage, you know, in the daily news cycle is you need to create a moment. And that's exactly what this is about, is trying to create this moment here as powerfully as possible. And that's what we're saying here is that just by getting right to that outdated systems. It's like that's your operative couple words there. We've got outdated systems. So the, the closer you bring those up to the word, but the more you're going to create a moment where everybody gets it and sits up and like, wow, that is a problem. How are you going to fix it? Yeah. And another way I think about that moment you know, with a fishing analogy is I use the ABT for a hook. And Greg, you were talking about how it got you attention and got the media, uh, you know, talking about gregslist.com. The ABT to me is that quick little punch, that quick little hook and then you can reel in your fish with the additional stories you are going to tell that are going to be more elaborative, uh, have more nuance in them, you know, to, to land them in the boat. So that's I always just try to think about keeping this as simple as possible. Let me show you a quick example of this. A company I worked with up in Toronto, Pret Auto Partez, is a used car dealership for credit challenge buyers up in Montreal. And they wanted to differentiate themselves from the typical smarmy used car dealerships you know, that are going out to take advantage of these poor people without uh, any money. And so they're going to get them into a car. They're going to drive around for three months and they'll go and repo it, basically. Well, he was just the opposite of this. And his, his hope was to grow by 20 percent. When I started working with him, we realized that that's not what they were about at all. Uh, his whole process was about helping people repair their credit through the smart purchase of a car. And his ABT is basically this that he has built his entire brand story on. 
It says, you want the convenience, so it's you placing you, the customer, at the center of the story. You want the convenience of owning a car, and you wish for that freedom it provides, because that's what people would tell them. But you have bad credit. Therefore, Prate Auto Partez will place you at a car you can actually afford to begin repairing your financial standing. They actually take their customers through a three-hour financial planning program before they will sell them any car whatsoever to make sure they get them in a car that they can afford and that they can make the payments on for two years and uh, repair their credit in Canada over the course of those two years. It led to their unique value proposition of Prade Auto Partez is your vehicle to financial freedom. He has used this as the cornerstone of what he calls, you know, with the story cycle, his Bible, his brand story Bible for hiring, for attracting customers, and they haven't grown by 20%. They have quadrupled their growth, opening their fourth dealership, and now are the number one dealership in Montreal uh, for used cars and helping people repair their credit. So this is the power of it. So they can base everything off of this very simple ABT and start building their brand on it. I want to show you one last funny one that came in through this very site. This is uh, Eric Relaya showed up about eight months ago. I've never met Eric, but I know he's been a follower here for about two years. And he sent this, you know, he says, I took a stab at applying the ABNT method. Feels a bit like I'm using circular logic, which happens when you first start doing this, by the way, because you're kind of like problem solution. Therefore, where does it all go? And so he starts writing this big, long ABT. There are literally millions of people, patients and non-patients alike, who are ashamed of or unhappy with their smile and not able to find an easy, painless, and affordable way to regain the life-changing confidence to smile. He almost kind of gets all of his and in his butt in his very first paragraph there. So you can see why he gets start, you know, starts becoming confused. But smile transitions is easy, painless, affordable. Oh, my goodness, he's introducing the solution where the problem needs to go. I won't read the rest of it because it is circular logic and it happens to all of us, but this is the beauty of the ABT is it makes you think in setup problem resolution dynamic, which is the ideal dynamic for branding and sales. So when I saw this, I just sent him back a note, says, here's my ABT. Nothing lights up a room like a beautiful smile and millions of people wish they could enhance their teeth, but they think it's difficult, painful, and expensive. Therefore, Smile Transitions is the fastest, most affordable way to restore your pearly whites and brighten your confidence. There's setup problem resolution. There's much more emotion in the word choice. It's extraordinarily shorter and to the point. So when Randy had said earlier, the power of specifics is what makes a story work. It's your, it's your word selection. And what how can you say the same thing but bring in some emotion as you do it? You know, nothing lights up a room, beautiful smile, pearly whites, brighten your confidence. Eric writes back, wow, thank you. Now I get it. And being the smart aleck I am, I had to give him one more ABT. And that was finding your theme is often like pulling teeth, painful and messy. But I found the ABT to be the smile transitions of branding. <laughs> Therefore, story on. <laughs> That's great. So now we're going to take some uh, quick questions here. Before we get to that, I just want to let you know that Randy and I are going to be doing a six session course starting June 9th. It'll be one hour every Tuesday and Thursday for three weeks, starting at uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. And we are going to be doing these trainings live. We have a group of seats, 25. I think we've already sold five of them since we've announced it uh, today. And that was and one Pacific, right? What's that? One o'clock Pacific time. One o'clock Pacific time. And this is the same program that we have been doing. Um, Randy is really headed up with the scientists over the past one and a half to two months. And now what, you've got three more of them in the works. And I've you know had the pleasure of being a part of it. Now, and, and while doing that, we had so much fun. I said, Randy, let's do this for the business world. And so uh, we've shortened it because we know the attention span of the business world is a little bit briefer. Um, instead of 10 sessions like we do with the scientists, we are doing six very uh, aggressive sessions here where you get a chance to work your ABT and you work them alongside the rest of the cohort of the 25 people. And it is incredibly powerful. 